When you're doing a, a sitting manipulation, you can do a bilateral gapping. And what you would do is if you found a level of hypertonus, you would actually put the towel a segment below because when it slides up, it's going to go up to that segment. If not, if you put it right over the segment, you're going to end up being above the segment you want to direct the manipulation to. If you do a unilateral technique, let's say that I want to do that same mobilization we were doing before where I would want to close on one side or open on the other, you would just angle the towel and then put a pillow here in order to lock it down a little bit more. So that's the only difference. But the, the manipulation is pretty much the same. So the way we do the manipulation, and I'll have Josh turn around and face the other way, you want to make sure they're not in a slump position. And sometimes the way you want to do it is you want to make sure that their feet are on the floor. If not, they can sit crisscross on the table. If I'm doing a bilateral manipulation, I'll take a pillow and put it in the lumbar spine because people will tend to hyperlordose. I will get that towel set up to the level that I want to do the manipulation at. And then I have some choices to make with the arms. So you have them cross in parallel. But if he had a right shoulder problem because the force is coming up through the right shoulder, I would have him switch the other way. Do you have a preference for shoulder? Yeah. So I find the level where I think the hypertonus is. And I take the towel and it will slide up just below that level. So we're basically using the towel so the top level will go back and, in this case, distract. My arms are here. Sometimes I'll take my fist and say, okay, can you slouch there? That way I, they're not in that hyperlordosis. I adduct my arms and then I bring them into this position here. If you're right behind them, their head could come back and then all of a sudden you have a head injury. So kind of stay to the side. I'll have them take a breath in and out and I'll explain to them, okay, does that feel okay? Anything? Nope. Okay, good. I've done my stress tests. I'm going to do a quick push. There may be a pop, may not be a pop. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I'll do the reset up. Good. Take a nice breath in and out. And we'll do the manipulation that way. Once you get the manipulation, you go back into what we were working on before. If I felt that when I did the manipulation that he was shifted this way, so he was closed this way and couldn't open, then I would have him this, this way, so I'd want him closing on this side. So I would put the towel under this way. A little bit better than that. And I would either work on closing or opening, taking a breath, and I would work on the ring. I could recheck strength as well, so I could have him put his arms out in front of him. And I could say, push into me. Does that still feel weak? Nope. So it could feel a little bit stronger. And then it's like that may have already done the neuromuscular reset, but then we could say, okay, now you feel how you can shift a little bit better. So shift to the side that made you stronger the last time. Now push and see how that's easier to do. So we manipulated the ring. Now we have to go right into a functional movement. So this is our test. This is just a preparatory one. Then we go into whatever functional movement he came in to see us for and see if we can make that stronger as well.